heart will be turned and let's all agree with a hearty amen as he's coming for us. Into this place, welcome into this place, welcome into these broken vessels. You desire to abide in the praises of your people so we lift our hands as we lift our hearts as we offer up praises to your name we say lord you are welcome into this place welcome into this to us by CD or watching us via DVD. We just thank God for being back in the house of prayer once again, having the opportunity to testify of the goodness of the Lord. If I had to say anything today, it would be simply this. If it had not been for the Lord that was on our side, where would I be? If you would turn with me in your Bibles today to Mark chapter 13, the gospel according to Mark chapter 13. And this song has been ringing in my head and I was trying to only sing one song and not even sing it all, but you know, something's in you, you gotta get it out. Um, God is a good God, yes he is born. Good God, yes, he is. oh God is a good God, yes, he is. oh God is a good God, yes, he is. Yes, he is.
signify by saying amen. Amen. The gospel according to Mark chapter 13 starting with verse number 30. If you need more time, say wait. The gospel according to Mark chapter 13 starting with verse 30 and it reads... <laughs> Verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But not of that day and that hour knoweth no man, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his works and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at evening or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning. Lest any coming, or lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Yes, yes. Our subject for this afternoon is entitled, Don't Fall Asleep. Don't Fall Asleep. We're living in a time where... The powers of darkness is all, it's illuminating itself all around us. And it's filtering into our conscience as holy people through television, through billboards, and through books. And whatever measure or medium that it can find, it is filtering itself through those manners and are trying to get into our psyche and trying to put us asleep as it relates to holy things. And Jesus was telling the parable and how that the time of his coming was going to be a time where men were not aware of his presence. But what I want you to understand is before the coming of the Lord, the enemy is trying to sap us of our strength and our power through our relationship with the Lord. The Bible said holiness without no man shall see the Lord. And that's why he's challenging how we live. He's challenging how we walk and what we saying what we do and what we don't do. Don't fall asleep. Watch this. Verse 35 of Mark, Mark 13 says, Watch ye therefore. 
See, in order to watch, that means you have to be alert or aware. Now, when I say don't fall asleep, I know immediately people's minds go to the fact that you don't go into RE and rapid eye movement. You don't go through the stages of dreaming and all those other things. I'm not talking about the dream state of or the sleeping where you lay your head on a pillow. How many of you know you can be sleeping even while you're driving? Yeah. How many of you have ever gotten to a place and asked yourself, how did I get here? Did I stop at all the red lights and did, did I make a right turn at the right place? How did I get here? And how many of you have not looked at your own life and seen the numbers on the calendar and said, when in the world did I turn 40 years old? Or well, how many of you say, how did we get to July and I don't even remember January? Oh, uh, it's somewhere in the point you fell asleep. You just kind of allowed the days to go by and you were not circumspected uh, about what was going on. Uh, the Bible commands us that we ought to walk circumspectly before the Lord. Uh, and that means that I've got to be delivered in what I'm doing so that I know that I'm fulfilling the will of God's purpose for and in my life. Amen. Watch ye therefore. For you know not when the master of the house cometh. Amen. At evening or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. Lest coming suddenly, he finds you sleeping. Amen. How many know the Bible says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient? Uh, see, it, when, when, when I look at scriptures and I go from Genesis even to Revelation, I see how. Many of people fell asleep on their assignment that God commanded them to. I can even remember the man Moses, how Moses fell asleep in busyness. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, come on here now. Huh? You can get busy and then fall asleep from your daily occupations and the things you have to do as it relates to God. Huh? Moses was so busy catering to the people that he forgot to circumcise his sons. Uh, and because he forgot to circumcise his sons, uh, God purposed that he was going to kill Moses. Uh, uh, but he had a praying wife uh, by the name of Zippor, uh, who realized because Moses has done this sin uh, and has broken the covenants of God, uh, God was going to kill him. Uh, so the Bible said Zippor sharpens her herself, uh, a stone and fork, and then circumcised uh, her boys. Uh, 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 somebody nudge somebody and said, don't fall asleep. Uh, uh, you need to understand uh, that there's so many ways that we fall asleep. Uh, there was even a man who was named Samson uh, who had a love and an infinity for strange women. Uh, even to the point where God said, Samson, you can't have these strange women. Uh, his father said, can't you find somebody amongst our kinfolk uh, who you love? Samson said, they don't appeal to me. So he went and found himself a beautiful Philistine woman by the name of Delilah. Uh, what is anybody in the house can testify of how you got yourself caught up in everything you've ever dreamt of. And when you thought you had your heart's desire, it became a nightmare. Ah, uh, don't fall asleep. When you're watching as well as praying, you can find out when people's character don't line up with God's character. You'll find out when people start stepping out of the will of God. And when they step out of the will of God, you start backing away. The Bible said having a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. He said from such turn away from. Don't fall asleep. The Bible illustrates for us the man Solomon. And the thing that blows my mind about Solomon is that Solomon was so wise to where he didn't ask God for riches but he asked God for wisdom to be able to judge the people. And the Bible shows us how when Solomon was a young man, that God said to Solomon, Solomon, walk uprightly before me. 
But Solomon, don't take unto you horses of Egypt and don't take strange wives unto yourself. But Solomon, in his wisdom, y'all you know, you know how we do it. We sometimes think that we're smarter than God. Huh? We sometimes think that God really doesn't know and understand who we are. So we think, well, I'll just do this and show God I can handle it. Huh? Don't you understand? Huh? God knows all things. Huh? He knows the ending. Huh? Before the beginning, y'all don't get that. Huh? Oh, but when you understand that when God said touch not, huh? handle not, he's trying to save you from falling asleep. Huh? And when you wake up like Solomon did, huh? Solomon found himself an, an old man huh? going into the temples of his strange wives, huh? making sacrifices, huh? and he turned his heart away from God. Huh? That's what's happening to the church today. Huh? We're allowing our hearts to be turned away from God. Huh? The things we used to call holy, huh? Shake ourselves off the dust 
But guess what we forget to do? Somebody tell me right quick, what happens if you've been lying in the dirt and you get the to shake the dirt off yourself, but you remain in that spot? The dust and the dirt come back on you. Oh, yes, yeah, see, y'all, y'all, y'all get that in a second. Watch this. Shake thyself from the dust and arise. And sit down, O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy what? Of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. That's why the Bible commands us to lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. It's because those things cause us to fall asleep. Now, here's a little truth moment for you. Have you ever found yourself to the point where you have been trying and trying so hard and you finally got disgusted to the point you just gave up? And when you gave up, you fell asleep. Because don't you realize that at the end of your hardship is your break? Y'all understand what I'm trying to tell you. The songwriter wrote the song and says, I almost gave up. I was right at the end of a breakthrough, but I didn't know it. I almost gave up. You need to understand. It's at the breakthrough that God's trying to get you to. And he wants you to remember what you came through. So now when you get to the other side of truth, you can look back over your life and you ask yourself, how did I get over? Ah, don't fall asleep. Huh? Mm. Hallelujah. Huh? Watch what he says. He, he says, For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught. How many of you know that's what we've done? We're trying to be like the secular churches. We're trying to be like everybody else. We want to have what they have. And God just showed me this personally that you won't have to do what other people do. To have what I have for you. He reminded me that when your ways pleases me, I make even your enemies appear at peace at you. He said, when you get hungry, I cause them to don't understand what I'm saying. When you understand that your relationship is with God and not with man. So what they talk about you. So what they think you're crazy. I'd rather be a fool for Christ than a fool for this world. The Bible said the fool says in his heart uh, that there is no God and he delayed his coming. Uh, uh, but if I be a fool for Christ, uh, for him I live, uh, for him I... Don't fall asleep. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves or not and ye shall be redeemed without money. Mm. I mean, no, we couldn't pay for that precious blood that Jesus shed. For thus saith the Lord God, my people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there. And the Assyrians oppressed them without cause. Now, therefore, whatever I hear, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught. They that rule over them make them to howl saith the Lord, and my name continually, every day is blasphemed. Don't we see this? The devil is putting before us things that are enticing. Now I want y'all to understand the devil does not have the power to make you to do anything. All he can do is entice you, but you have to have the desire or the appetite for what he's presenting to you. Yeah, y'all want to hear what I'm telling you. Yeah. And I always say this jokingly, but you can't use Flip Wilson's line as Gerald did. The devil made me do it. Honey, the devil didn't make you do anything. Huh? Because what you have to understand, you have to yield huh, to the temptation. Ah, uh, somebody, I hear you saying, but Pastor, you don't understand. Sometimes it's just easy to go ahead and do it and get it over with. Uh-uh, you got it all wrong. When you do it, it doesn't end. It just keeps going on. Huh? How many of you said, I'm only going to do this this one time? And here it is 50 times later, you still say, one more time. Honey, you got to put that thing to death. When it comes to you, you say, oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to let myself be entangled again with the yokes of bondage. Don't fall asleep. Verse 6 of Isaiah 52. So therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, somebody, we need to know his name. 
We go into church, but we don't know why we're coming. We're praying, but we don't know to whom we're praying to. We have expectations, but we don't know what our expectations are of. We're just going through the motion. That's like taking a trip and not mapping out your destination. How do you know when you have arrived? How do you, how do you know how much money you need to get to where you're going and then also to be able to return from where you're going? Ah, uh, y'all can't stand. Watch, watch this, watch this. He, he says in, in, in Isaiah 52 and 60, therefore my people shall know my name, therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that does speak. Behold, it is I. So they say, you know, I don't have to go to church and have nobody preaching to me. I can read the word for myself. And that's, that's fine and good. But watch this. He says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. That publishes peace. That bringeth good tidings of good. That publishes salvation. That saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring Zion again. Or bring when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Bring forth into what? Joy. Y'all think we got we have joy? Oh, we got quiet. I remember. As a little boy, that we, my brothers and sisters, the six of us, or seven of us, we would race out of the car to get to church. Because we could not wait to hear the saints singing praises, clapping their hands, and somebody testifying of the goodness of Jesus. And that sometimes we would mess around and get caught up in the service and one of my brothers or sisters who had no intention of being moved of the spirit would find ourselves shaking and dancing in the spirit. Y'all yeah, see, y'all don't remember that. I can remember being in the backyard playing church and I had to always be the preacher because nobody else could preach like I could. And I remember that we would get in the backyard and we would get my mom's old sheets and blankets and lay them out in the yard. And my sisters and them would always put a little napkin over their heads and we would have church in the backyard. And by the end of the service, they would kick it up all over the yard and my mama would come out there tarrying with us. Y'all remember that. We did not know anything other than to expect God's presence. So now when we say we have the Holy Ghost and we have an understanding of God, we come and sit down and go, okay, it's almost one o'clock. It's almost time to go home. We don't even expect God to show up. Ah, oh, but I have an expectation that I tell God every day, I need to feel your presence. I need to know that you're here with me. I don't always need him to open doors for me. I don't always need him to pay another bill for me. I don't need him always to shut up my enemy. All I need him to do is just touch me. Now I know that I am pregnant. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. Oh, because when God is with me, great is he that is within me. Y'all don't all, y'all hear me. Don't fall asleep on the word. You better expect what God said in his word to come to pass. God wants to do something in this last day. Oh, but we have to have the right expectation. Watch this. Isaiah 52 and 8. And I'm trying, I'm trying to go through this quickly. Thy watchman shall lift up thy voice. And then he says in verse 9, break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord hath comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. Anybody in the house today, God has comforted you? Anybody in the house has the Lord redeemed? Anybody in the house, the devil told you you were going to die in your situation? Anybody in the house, you thought you were going to lose your 
For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rare reward. Amen. Your re reward. Y'all see that? Yes. He's going to provide and provide. <clears throat> but you've got to understand don't fall asleep. Right. Don't try to do it on your own. And I'm bringing this to a close because I'm getting to the meat of this. Go with me to Matthew chapter 13. Excuse me, verse 24. Start with verse 24. And I told you all before that it's the enemy's ploy to plant seeds in your mind right, right, right. while you're asleep. Right, right. And when I say while you're asleep, I don't mean just when you right. singing lullabies in your dreams. Right. I'm talking about when you're worried about how you're going to pay the next bill, when you're worried about that loved one, when you're trying to figure out stuff, you're falling asleep because you forgot what the Word said. <laughs> Look at what happens when you fall asleep. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. Amen. Matthew 13, 25 said, But while men slept, mm-hmm, Everybody said, don't, don't fall asleep. asleep. Right, right. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and did what? Wait, wait, wait. See, here's our problem. Church has taught us that the devil is always with you, trying to stumble you or trying to stop you. So we call everything the devil. We always looking for the, the fella in the red suit and with the pitchfork. How many of you know the devil don't really work like that? Amen. He comes and plants his seed and he leaves you to yourself. Right, right. Somebody y'all need to talk to me here now. Because when you were 13 years old and you did some things that nobody ever knew about and now you're 43 and you still wrestling with what you did when you were 13. Them seeds are now bearing trees. Yeah. Let me show you what I'm talking about. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the what? Now, let me make it plain for somebody. While you should be walking in your blessings, you so wrestling with strongholds. Right, that's true, that's true, that's true, that's true. You say, well, I know I'm saved. You're right. You're right. Why am I still having these thoughts? You say that right, you say that right. I, I know God loves me, but why do I sometimes feel right. like he's not with me? You say right. I know I want to do the will of God, but why every day I wake up, I have to wrestle with whether I pray or do I just don't even get out of bed? Because while you were asleep, well, you figured I don't have to go to church today because mm, I'm not going to really miss anything. Well, you say, well, today I'm just not going to read the word because it's the same thing I read yesterday. <laughs> or when you said, there's no need for me to go to Bible study because it's the same thing we've been talking about for the last 100 years. So I'm not going to miss anything in the day. Somebody said, don't, don't fall off. asleep. Watch this, watch this, watch this. He said, so, but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tears? Amen. How many of you have evaluated your life and said, when did I let these things happen to me? You're right, you're right. You're right. When you're did right. I start doing this? When did this become my thought? When did this become my thinking? Right, right, right. And what's the first thing you want to do? You want to run in somebody's prayer line and get an instant deliverance. You want to come to the altar and expect to get a quick fix. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. How, how many of y'all know that? It took a process of time to become what you are. Right, right, right. And there's a process to... Y'all don't get what I'm trying to tell you. Because see, 
you go through sleep cycles to get to the REM where your body can then start resting and healing itself. And your T cells start going through and finding the bad cells and, 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 and ejecting them. And the same thing happens. It takes a process to come out of sleep. Huh? Yeah, y'all don't get what I'm saying. You don't just wake up and get rolling. Anybody ever tried to wake up in a hurry and you found that though your body was up, your mind was still asleep? Anybody ever tried to get up and get a hurry and when you put your feet to the floor, you found that your legs were still sleeping? That's what's happening to the church. We're trying to do the will of God. We're trying to set men free. But when we get there, we don't have a word. Oh, we're trying to do the will of God. But we forgot seek God to find out what he wants us to say and where he wants us to go. Don't fall asleep. Look at verse 28. He said unto them, an enemy hath done this. Notice the enemy did what he did, and then he walked away. He left you to your own thing. Now let me help somebody make sense of this. You saw somebody, and they didn't seem like they were very nice to you. So the next time you saw them, they don't say anything to you. So what do you say? Ah, see, I knew they didn't like me. And all of a sudden, their voices start talking to you. They think they're better than you. And then the, the, the voices stay with you and you get home and then you start evaluating your day. You know what? That's not the only thing she did to me. She actually brushed me. You sleeping. Because now you're letting the seed of bitterness right. settle in your heart. Right, 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 right. And now, because you got bitterness in your heart, God can't hear your prayers. Somebody say, he'll hear my prayer. Honey, you must not know the word. You say, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Or, in, in translation, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. If you can't forgive somebody else, there's no need for you to ask God for forgiveness for your own self. Mm. Well, well, watch this. He said, and he said, an enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Well, thou then that we go and gather them up? That's a quick fix. Yes. But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Right, right. Any of you ever messed up your life trying to fix your life? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You don't have to tell me. I know what it is. Sometimes you have to let your getting in line with God and the process of righteous living to kill off everything that's unlike God. Right. Amen. Amen. Amen, right? Because right. right. we try to do a quick fix. Right. 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 This thing doesn't happen overnight. And I know we would like for things to happen instantaneous, but let me tell you all something. As human beings, when things happen quickly for us, we forget the process. That's right. 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 You said it right. You said it right. Amen. Uh, but when God you lets right. you go Amen. through Amen. the Amen. process, Right. That's why he says, whom he loves, he also chasteneth or chastises so that he would not be condemned with the world. Because he wants you to remember every time you step it out, what it felt like. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying? Watch this, watch this, watch this. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together. First the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat unto my barn. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Just starting there to let you see that you have to be deliberate about what you put in you. That's true. That's true. You have to be delivered about what you do. Because right, right, a mustard right, seed, right, right. for anybody who's ever seen a mustard seed, it's, it looks like a flea. It's so small. You have to have faith that something so small 
it's going to become something great. The same thing as relates to anything that's not like God. It's a little fox that destroys the vine. You got to understand anything that starts out cute, you buy a puppy because it's the cutest puppy, you don't realize that that puppy is going to become a dog. Uh -huh. It's the same with you being able to handle it today. Five years from to now, from now, the thing you were able to handle is not handling you. Don't fall asleep. Please listen to this admonishment today. The enemy is trying to lure you into a place where he's going to have control over your thinking. Right, right, right. And as a man thinketh in his heart, come on somebody, tell me what that verse says. So is he. So you can be coming to church carrying the heaviest Bibles. But if your heart is not thinking righteous unto God, guess what you are? You're an unrighteous person looking righteous. All Jesus told us Pharisees and scribes. He said, y'all look good on the outside. Amen. He said, y'all look good like the beautiful sepulchers. He said, but you're full with dead men's bones. Don't fall asleep. We're in that day now, saints of God. Where it just takes a little to lure, lure you into sleep. If you have cable TV or what is that thing called? This network. You can sit home and have the movie theater in your own house. It used to be a time where saints didn't go to movies because we understood the spirit behind the movies. And we understood the spirit behind the writers of the movie. And when you expose yourself to those spirits, they follow you and they create hardship for you. But now what we do, we don't go to the theaters. We bring the movie to our houses. You sit down and you watching it going on. Mm. Then you're trying to figure out why your house has lost its peace. Come on now. You fell asleep. Y'all yeah, won't get what I'm trying Jesus. to tell you. You're right. You're right. In my house, as a little boy, if we weren't saved, you wouldn't listen to blues in my parents' house. Amen. If you had yourself a little transistor radio, you went down the road or you went somewhere else, but you didn't bring that mess in my parents' house. But nowadays, they okay there in their room. Don't you understand? You letting them spirits take control of your house? Y'all yeah. not hearing me. And I'm about, to, I'm about to make all the little kids angry. We buy these little Nintendos and all these little games for these kids. And all this fighting and everything going on. And we letting them play them because it's innocent. Don't you understand that you're releasing them spirits into your children? You sleeping and you trying to figure out why is your child so agitated? I figured this out because I'm around people all day. All they do is complain all day. And when I leave my job, I'm drained. And you know what I want to do? I just want to complain all night. Don't fall asleep. So you know what I had to do? I take my earphone and put it in the good ear and I listen to preaching all day or singing all day. So while they're complaining, I can't really hear them with this ear. So when they call me, they go, Mr. Turner. They have to come out of their cubicles and get my attention. I go, are you talking to me? Why? Because you can't fall asleep. The enemy is using subtle methods right. to plant seeds. Right. 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 Wake up, saints. Right. Right. Your head nodding right now, but you got time to shake yourself. That's right. That's right. Shake yourself. Don't let yourself fall asleep because you don't want the Lord to find you sleeping. And, and I don't mean just the rapture, but God is requiring of each one of you to bear fruit. And when he positions you to do the purpose of the kingdom and you sleeping, guess what? He going to snatch you up and set you aside to go to be burned. Mm -hmm. The word did say 
Them that bear not fruit, what's he going to do with you? He's going to cut you down and cast you into the fire. So don't fall asleep. Don't say to yourself, I'm saved, that's all that matters. I'm just waiting to go to heaven. The devil is a liar. God did not save you to sit down and wait to go to heaven. Right. Heaven is a seven-year venture. Seven years. And the rest of the life that you will live with God is going to be on the earth. Amen. So you need to conquer right here. Because it's going to be our eternal home. Right. Y'all don't know. Yeah. Right. I'm going to leave that alone. Right. Don't fall asleep. I'm finished. Amen. I have so much that's in my spirit. But the message is finished. Amen. Don't fall asleep. Don't fall asleep. In Jesus' name. And the house of Jacob is Oh, cry loud, cry loud, spin up Oh, lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion Show my people their transgressions And the house of Jacob is Oh, cry loud, spin up Oh, lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion Thank you. 